Now at the leaked report, uh, the meant to be the sealed section of the Carr, Brax, Faulkner post-election review of the Labor Party. It's been leaked to the Sydney Morning Herald today. I spoke to the Defence Minister Stephen Smith a short time ago. I began by asking him for his reaction to that report. Well, firstly, uh, I haven't seen uh, the so-called uh, closed edition of, uh, of the election review. That's the first point. Secondly, I've seen previous media references to it, so there's been speculation about its contents in the past. What we do know is that we had uh, a tough time during uh, the run-up to that election campaign and in the course of that election campaign, and uh, leaks about uh, uh, what had supposedly occurred in the course of our first term uh, were a most unhelpful contribution to that. But uh, I've never seen it, I've never asked to see it, I'm not proposing to ask to see it uh, for myself. Uh, I've always thought we were best off just uh, moving on. It was a very uh, tough campaign for us. It was a bad campaign in many respects. Uh, no one's disputing that. But our job now is uh, to get down to the job of government. We've worked through a series of tough issues in the course of the first year in this uh, our second term, and we've got uh, nearly two years to go. It, it does imply that the former Prime Minister or his supporters were behind the damaging leaks of last year's election. That will be seen as a shot across the bows, won't it, to, to Kevin Rudd and his backers? Well, that's what the newspaper says. As I say, I haven't seen the report. Um, I'm not proposing to ask to see it. Um, it was done, as you would expect, in the aftermath of a, a very tough and difficult campaign for us, where we uh, ended up uh, forming a minority government. Uh, to me, it's, uh, it's, it, 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 it's part of history. Um, and I, you know, treat... But it's not all history, though, because it's been, it's been leaked now. Uh, shouldn't it be seen in the well, terms what, of trying to put Mr Rudd well, back well, in his box? Well, as I say, that's what the newspaper asserts, uh, and I don't pay it any more weight than a whole range of assertions I've seen in a newspaper. For myself, it's part of history. Let's move on. Our challenge now is to govern and govern well. OK, let's uh, move on. If I can ask you about the news poll today, uh, a little bit of a bright spot to finish the year. The, the primary vote's still very low, but do you take some comfort from that number today? Well, again, I don't get into the fortnightly dissection. I think you've got to look at these things on the long run. But you know, we're now into December. What's my analysis of this year? Uh, I think if you had said that uh, uh, in the course of this year, that at the end of the year... Published polls were showing Labor two or three points behind two-party preferred. The opposition leader with a disapproval rating of uh, 55 to 60 points. Uh, the Prime Minister comfortably ahead on preferred Prime Minister. Uh, that we've got uh, our minerals resources tax legislation through uh, the Parliament. We've got car through the House. We've got carbon, carbon uh, pollution legislation through the Parliament. Uh, and I think commentators now starting to say, well... Uh, Labor's ended the year in a much better position than we could have possibly expected. The weight does now go on the leader of the opposition, who has earned a reputation of being uh, more negative than any opposition leader we've ever seen before. And, and is, has, do, do you feel that this poll is vindication of the strategy that the government's clearly undertaken to try and portray Mr Abbott that way? Well, our, our strategy has been simply this. We want to govern and govern well for a three-year period. I've said you know, before on your program that people need to take a long-term view. The next election will be in September, October, November of 2013. We've, we've, we're, we're about to finish our first year of uh, a second uh, a term in office and it's the unwise uh, commentator, the most unwise commentator who knocks out a government after 12 months of a three-year term. If you were doing that, Variously, in the last uh, 20 years, you would have knocked out the Howard, Keating and Hawke governments who, from a comparable position, were, were all successfully re-elected. So this is a long-haul race. Now, I would say this, wouldn't I? But I'd much rather be us than them. OK, let's ask your... Uh, I want to ask a couple of questions on your portfolio sure. specifically. The, the Chief of Navy this morning, it's um, a, a memo reported in the Australian newspaper suggesting that he's attacked a culture of entitlement within the Navy, accusing sailors of, uh, of, of wasting, essentially, wasting taxpayers' money. What do you make of this memo? Do you agree with the, the, uh, the Vice Admiral Ray Griggs? Well, I'm with the Chief of Navy on this point. Uh, the Chief of Navy, uh, a week or so ago, sent out a, a, a message to uh, all members of Navy, essentially saying, 
we're going through a big strategic reform program. We have to be more efficient with uh, what we do. We have to get value for money with what we do. And there are a range of areas where we have to essentially not just rein in spending, but make sure that taxpayers' money are used appropriately. So do you think there's a culture of entitlement among sailors? Well, that's the, that's the uh, terminology that the Chief of Navy has used. And I simply say, on this matter, I very strongly support the Chief of Navy. The Chief of Navy has been in the job now for, uh, for six months or so. He's doing a very good job. Uh, and whether it's on uh, the strategic reform program, whether it's on working very closely with me and the Secretary and the Chief of the Defence Force on making sure we've got a heavy amphibious lift capability for the coming disaster relief uh, season, uh, whether it's working very hard with me on submarines, he's doing a first-class job, uh, and, uh, and I fully support uh, what he has said to all members of Navy, which is the strategic reform program, getting value for money, making sure we're effective and efficient with what we do is, is a very sensible and good thing to do. Well, one last question on the uranium uh, vote at the weekend at the conference, the ALP conference, lifting the ban on uranium exports. Now, there was one suggestion, I think it, it was in your speech and in a couple of others as well, about boosting the strategic partnership with India. What are the prospects on that front for, for greater engagement? Well, I think two things. Firstly, I'm very pleased with the decision. What changed our view in this area was India coming under the authority of the two civil nuclear regulators, the International Atomic Energy Agency and the Nuclear Suppliers Group. And that's what has allowed us to move forward in this area. But from a strategic point of view, everyone sees the rise of China, not enough people see the rise of India. By the middle of this century, the United States, China and India will be the three great superpowers. And India, as the largest democracy, is entitled to be accorded respect in that, uh, in that regard. So this, will, this has been what people describe as a, a, a grain of sand or an irritant in the relationship. I think some people have overstated that. Uh, but this will be uh, a deeply significant decision so far as uh, our, our strategic relationship with India is, is concerned. We've worked very hard over the last uh, three or four years to build that relationship, whether it's on the trade and investment front or whether it's on the defence-to-defence -defense, uh, relationship and arrangements. Minister, I appreciate your time. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks very much.